Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. It's been a while, but I, I promise you it's it's going to be worth it. Because, hey, look at this. We can put tools on the wall. We can we can lean a tool against the wall. No, for real, um, the new update for Vintage Story has come out. And there are and have been quite a lot of little quality of life uh, features in in this new update. And, and I'm loving it. I'm, I'm really appreciating a lot of the new stuff i'm just checking out oh you know we can put a bow on the on the wall that's that's fun they changed my long swords into these weird curved swords i'm not sure exactly what the uh what the idea behind that was but i don't i'm not complaining they look cool um they, they certainly look a little bit nicer we have oxygen bars now so we can uh Oh, we can officially die in a new way, which is to say we can drown. Uh, that's fun. Um, we can uh, die to wolves. That's not a new feature. That's a that's an old feature, actually. But we will be dying uh, several times to wolves in this episode. But the first thing we're going to do is die to a wolf. Actually, you might have seen that. That was a bait and switch. You might have, might have seen that coming, actually. Uh, I was collecting some oak, but uh, in fact, we are dying to a wolf. And uh, there's the same wolf. Can can we, uh, do you think we can kill it this time? You might notice that the textures are a little weird. This is not a, not a thing I fix for maybe a couple of episodes, so we're going to see some uh, wonky textures. I hope you don't mind. Uh, most of the textures are fine. Um, you can probably tell that, but most of the mobs... Uh, have wonky textures, but hey, we got fish. That's kind of cool. We can't do anything with them yet. Um, I think fishing is planned in uh, to be a part of the game, but uh, not not for a while. So, but you know, I'm content to at least see them roam around. Uh, it's, it's quite nice. I am uh, doing stuff with bees. Um, I was I actually the reason I came out here in the first place was to check on my skeps and check on the bees. Um, this is before I understand fully how bees work. Um, this is something I will come back to in a later episode. I'll, I'll properly um, kind of establish the bees. Uh, yeah, I'm basically starving here. Uh, this in the next episode, you're going to see me starving a lot. I'm sorry about this. This is a, a unfortunate news um, because it really is just a result of me being kind of semi-lazy. I've run out of food and wine and everything that I can consume. I've run out of calories, just straight up. So uh, I no longer have the sustenance to to go on. But um, go on, we, we must, because there's plenty to do. But at least it spurs me on to working on the uh, greenhouse, which I am working on here. You'll see this a little bit in, the, in this in the next episode as well. Uh, is me kind of working on the foundation of the greenhouse. I wanted to get um, water around the, the, the underneath the walls, basically, because that means that the uh, the dirt on the inside is, um, you know, it's moist. The moisture uh, carries to the walls of the uh, of the dirt on the inside, which is nice. Here's me experimenting a little bit with decorations and uh, turning. Uh, it turns out I don't like them, so. Uh, I am doing a bit of leather working, and I have a plan to basically create a leather working area. Probably in the first floor, I kind of want to move what is currently the storage area to um, a different part of the house, and then make that like the leather tanning area. Um, here's, I, I'm like actually putting this question out there. If anyone can tell me how to remove rot from a uh, from one of those little jars, um, please let me know because I can't seem to figure it out. I don't know how I'm supposed to do it. I can't seem to bowl it out as I do uh, normal like soup or stuff like that. And I can't seem to just put it in the barrel of rot, but it's stuck in there and, and I kind of don't like seeing it. Um, I'm not sure if this is a new feature or not, but there seems to be a little bit of speculative lighting. I think that's what the term is um, on, on the, uh, the, the bars of uh, ores. Here we can see a new feature. The, um, the waypoint system has been greatly improved. So these are all really nice new features of uh, the new vintage story. I'm pr I, I'm not sure if maybe there's a bit of new lighting on the on the ores, but I could be wrong about it. Sometimes sometimes you like to you know you get a kind of a placebo update effect where he's like oh, yeah this is there's new update so clearly there's a new lighting system of course, but. 
we're really going to need some new copper or sorry more copper and that's going to come in huge handy because um i'm going to be working on something semi-important oh here we go again with wolves um do i die yes i do there there's our second death to wolves in case you're keeping count um but yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna need a ton of copper. Copper is officially like our biggest bottleneck, which is really ironic because it was basically the thing I couldn't have. You know, I had too much of it at one point for sure, and now I just can't get enough of it because it is basically required for every single alloy, uh, including brass, which is the thing that we are going to be working on in uh, this in the next episode. But um, <clears throat> if you're curious about brass, well, it is. Uh, used for the torch holders and the torch holders though they are kind of expensive are worthwhile they are ultimately cheaper than using uh, fat for making oil lanterns I actually do really regret uh, making those oil lanterns because when I when I come to think of how much fat I could have had and used for making axles and uh, like we I wouldn't say we'd, we'd have automation right now if I hadn't done that, but I will say that I would be a lot closer to having automation, so. But the good news is that uh, I am going to be getting more fat pretty soon, um, because I, I am starting to actually use the bow, and I really like it. The bow is fantastic. Um, we're going we're gonna to see maybe a little bit of bow usage, um, either in this or the next episode. Um, so... Here, I'm like, really, I'm still tr struggling a little bit to use the Prospector's Pickaxe. I am really bad at it. I think I'm, I'm pretty bad at it. Sorry, I smacked the mic, but um, I can't seem to, like, figure out direction. Like, I, I can get a sort of idea of where it is, and then I can kind of uh, theorize based on what it's telling me. And I know that that's basically the idea, but um, at a certain point, I just don't know. I'm like, up, down, left, right. I have it to a radius of eight right now, which is pretty much what people recommend, and it's a good, um, it's good enough. Like it doesn't need to be more than that, and less than that would be kind of unhelpful. But uh, I tend to try and like you know use the pickaxe or the pro prospector's pickaxe, move like four blocks, and then uh, use it again and see what kind of new information it's giving me. Here, um, I, I found this really nice cave, and it's full to the brim with copper, which is really really good. But um, here I'm like trying to figure out where is this verified large amounts of copper. Um, and uh, I think it eventually it turns into verified very large amounts. But you know, me medium amounts and you know we're back to this back to this business of where where are we? Uh, where is the copper? But here we finally find it. Um, but there's a lot of me struggling with uh, copper in this area. And the thing is is if it's like two ores, I'm not sure what happens. If there's two ores um, competing for the Prospector pickaxe attention, I'm not sure if it'll t like tell you, like, does that mean that there's large amounts? Or does that mean that there's, like, does it tell you there's a medium amount and there's also another medium amount? I'm pretty sure it doesn't actually discern two different nodes. So it'll just tell you there's a very large amount um, inside your radius. But anyway, we starve to death. Um, again, I'm going to be starving to death quite a bit. But uh, the one thing we will solve in this episode uh, near the end... Oh, is this our third wolf death? Oh, 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 come on, buddy. You can kill him. You can, you can kill it. Oh, third wolf death. Th third wolf death. Uh, we will be sorting out the spawn area, which is something I haven't really been dealing with. Is this, is this fourth wolf death already? Oh, my God. Four. Four wolf deaths. I can't, can't honestly believe it. Fifth? I can't believe how many times I died to wolves here. Here's the kind of almost eureka moment because I was so sick to death, literally, of a dying to wolves. So I switched it up and uh, switched to our bow. And let's see if we get our shot. Bing. Bing. Dead. Nice. Uh, and that was like a real moment of like, wow, actually the bow... I know I've done a lot of damage to the wolf with the uh, with my weapons, but my my general um, feeling for ranged weaponry in Vintage Story has been mixed. I had n very mixed results with the spear because the spear is very um, difficult to aim with. 
but the bow is different. It uh, has a bit of a cadence to it. Uh, you really kind of have to like, it's not just aim, but you have to kind of uh, time your shot so that it, you get the most accuracy. And of course it is affected by gravity. Um, and there's a little bit of, um, you know, wiggle room to, to where your shot will land. But ultimately it is very accurate and it is it does a nice chunk of damage. And you do get your arrows back. And I, I've said this in other series, but I'll say it again. I love uh, games that make use of bows because you uh, if you can get your arrows back, that means that they, there's an actual purpose and uh, incentive to, to kind of reclaiming your ammo, especially when resources are tight, like in Vintage Story. So I would say the bow mechanics in Vintage Story are like 10 out of 10. They're exactly what you want. Um, you there's What's actually interesting is the uh, what separates the different ammo types, meaning like what kind of metal or alloys you use to craft different arrows. Their differences aren't just in uh, d penetrative damage, which they do have differences in penetrative damage, but also the likelihood of you getting your arrow back when you miss or even hit a thing. If you hit a thing, you still get your arrow back, which is really nice. I'm pretty sure that is not true in uh, Minecraft, which is kind of a bummer. I mean, I kind of get it for balancing issues, but, and you know, honestly in Minecraft, um, you know, resources are, are very rich and it's a lot easier to, to get arrows than it is in Vintage Story. But uh, all the same, it, it feels like a bummer that you have to like carry, uh, you know, uh, stacks of arrows because if you're using them at all, you're probably using them up. Whereas in Vintage Story, I can carry like 20 arrows on me and I will probably reclaim those many, many times before actually losing them. I think with the, um, the arrows I'm currently using, I mean, flint um, are, are pretty much, they, I, I think they have a certain percentage of like they'll use up, but I think the copper um, arrows that I am currently using have like a 12% chance of breaking, not of reclaiming, of actually breaking. So that means most of the time you're actually going to get your arrows back. And then they actually, they, they only go up from there. So uh, making really good arrows in Vintage Story is like kind of incentivized, which I'm not used to seeing that. I, I've seen, seen arrows and uh, bow com combat mechanics used or implemented into a lot of games. I haven't seen a lot of them incentivize making high quality arrows as much. They, I know they do, but they do in the sense of like having extra damage and not in the sense of like actually uh, conserving materials, which is uh, kind of novel. Um, I could be wrong about that. Maybe let me know in the chat. Uh, or the comments, what what uh, what other games have you seen that uh, incentivize higher quality arrow you, uh, crafting? I, I know it's a weird and specific topic, but it's one that does actually interest me because I do really enjoy uh, bow mechanics. I think uh, maybe one day I'll do like a Caves of Cud bow run because I know there have been some pretty good bow mechanics added to that game. And uh, similarly, you can reclaim your arrows. Anyway, enough arrow talk. We found ourselves a little extra dungeon or I don't know what you want to call it. This is like a, a hobble underground, which is kind of neat. And it had a old fashioned torch holder in there, which was a really nice find before I basically keel over from starvation. But you can see this cave. Um, there didn't seem to be a lot of critters roaming around, which was really nice. And there's just like a ton of resources in, in copper and uh, that old fashioned, uh, the, the, the old or ancient torch holder was a really, really nice find because those are actually pretty pretty um, expensive to make. It's not even just like expensive material-wise, but it's also expensive like time-wise. But we'll see uh, We'll see that used or uh, placed in the next episode. Um, that's pretty much going to do this. I actually split up a session into two episodes for once because uh, there's just too much going on. But hey, look at this. Springtime is finally here. Isn't that exciting? I'm, I'm excited. Um, if you did enjoy this, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content, content like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.